Uh, well, first, I just want to thank the Oakland A's for giving me the opportunity to continue my baseball career at the professional level. But honestly, it was just such a surreal thing. I don't really think it's quite hit me yet. But, I mean, a lot of texts, a lot of calls. It just it shows how many people actually care about me and my future and what it has, what it has to hold. And it's just, as of now, I'm still kind of speechless, but still trying to figure everything out. What were you doing when you when it all happened? I was sitting on my couch and we were watching the TV on the on the uh, MLB network or the whatever it was the online thing and we had hooked up to the TV and evidently the Twitter was a little bit sooner so I got like seven calls before I even got drafted on the thing so I was like well I guess that ruined it but it's still kind of cool it was uh it's just sitting at home with the family did Oakland come as a surprise no I mean he's followed me ever since high school and We've talked a lot throughout the year, but I mean, either way, it's always a surprise in the end because the drafts are just such a crazy thing about where you could go. Like, I mean, I've seen people projected first overall end up slipping down to the third, fourth round. I mean, it just, you really just never know what happens. So it's still always a blessing and a surprise at the end of it. Hogan, did you talk to uh, Wyatt Marks at all? I did. I asked him if we wanted to room together. <laughs> what did he say? He said, I'll have to see about that. <laughs> but. No, I mean, it's crazy. Why well, just can't ever get away from me? High school, UL, now the majors. You guys crazy. just got to get some bunk beds, right? Oh, I don't know about that. I'm <laughs> a little big for a bunk bed these days. Did that, that kind of come where you were where you were looking at? I know you, there were projections out there all over the place. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, honestly, it fell at the higher end of the projection, which I'm definitely not upset about. I mean, it was anywhere from middle, second round all the way to middle fourth. So, I mean, early third was definitely nothing to complain about. And it's just, in the end, it's just, it really didn't matter where I went. It's just a blessing to be drafted no matter what. But it definitely, definitely kind of put some cherry on top. Okay, the, what, the work that you put in gets you to this point. Mm -hmm. Now, can you talk about what you're going to have to do to kind of put your career in, into focus and put it where you want it to go? Well, there's always little things you need to work on. I mean, there's never, like you talk to guys in the big leagues. Clayton Kershaw was talking some a couple weeks ago where he said he learned more stuff from new pitchers on the team. Like, there's always something you can learn. But in the end, what I've done so far to get me to this point has worked pretty well. So as of now, I'm going to stick to that and what I've been doing. But, of course, like I said, there's always little things that can work on here and there to help your game. Can you guys tell you about any plans? Are you going to go pitch somewhere? I mean, I'm assuming. We haven't. It was really just a quick call because these rounds go by real quick. I think they have like 30 seconds in between each pick and stuff. So it's it's a very quick process. So really, they said they're going to call me later tonight. My advisor is going to call me later tonight. We're going to have really a meeting just to figure out the logistics, all that stuff right now. What was the first thing that your parents said to you? When you uh, I don't know. My dad was crying. But uh, <laughs> my mom, they just, my mom and dad, they just hugged me and they were like, congratulations, work's paid off and just, Really what you would expect to happen. It was a pretty crazy moment. It was awesome. What about the whole signing process, though, in terms of how that might play out? Uh, well, like I said, we're going to have the logistics meeting later tonight, figure out what's going to happen, uh, if I have to go to them, if they're going to come to me, meet in the middle. I mean, really never know. We're going to talk about all that stuff later, figure it out. Do you expect it to be a pretty quick process, though? Uh, from what I've heard, it probably will be. Uh, you never know. I could be, I could have to leave Thursday. I could leave next week. I could leave in a month. Really depends on the club and what exactly they want me to do from this point on. Coach Robichaud always talks about the person, not only the player. Mm -hmm. um, you guys had pitching staff, uh, pitching guys who have pitched here seem to do pretty well in the big leagues. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about what you what you've learned here from Coach Robichaud that's kind of made you into not only a better pitcher but a better better guy? Really, he's always talked about how you shouldn't really worry about how you perform on the field. It's more how hard you work at practice, the type of person you are. Like, you know, like everyone says what you're doing, not in the spotlight. But I mean, realistically, that it really is what it's all about. Because, you know, Travis Swaggerty from South Alabama, I've been good for him since for a while. I mean, he went 10th overall, good for him. But the things that guy does behind the scenes, like he'll be hitting in the batting cage till 2 a.m. sometimes. Like it's like little things like that. Like I'll go to pitching coaches. Like in times a lot of people will be taking off. Just it's really just doing the work that you need to do 
but not just doing it when you need to do it, if that makes sense. Were you keeping tabs on it last night? Or how close I was. I was I was sitting there last night because, like I said, talked to some teams. There was a chance that it would happen last night. So, I mean, we were there watching. I mean, it was pretty cool, though, because, honestly, I knew probably half the guys that got drafted just throughout the years playing different baseball with Marucci, going to all kinds of different events. So it was pretty cool to watch. So then today, like, did you expect to hunker down for – a while or you know, what no I mean I had I had calls that were coming in from various teams saying like we'll probably we'll you know try to get you here here but there's always the fact they always in the conversation we can't guarantee anything at this time so you really never know so I mean it was just it was pretty nice to be only having to sit there for 10 minutes so that was pretty awesome what's the uh, what's the biggest thing that you maybe heard about minor league baseball that you're intrigued to find out for yourself? It's an adventure. That's the easiest way to put it. Uh, from what I heard, there's a lot of a lot of ups and downs, a lot of, really it's a, a lot of moving around, especially the first year. Because I mean, I could be sent one place and then a week later be sent somewhere else and maybe go back or other places. It's just, it's crazy just how the process works. So as of now, I'm not exactly sure but I'll let you know later how it is. Do you have a favorite spot on the bus? I'm a big back of the bus guy, back right. But I'm the new guy now, so I'll probably have to sit in the front. <laughs> it's all right. Thanks, Logan. All right. Thank you, Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you.